Hello class, this is lesson 2-1 about writing and interpreting equations. So to begin, if we're talking about an equation, we're simply talking about a mathematical statement with two expressions and an equal sign. All right, so those are the only components. Um, if we are looking at an equal sign um, and wanting to know what key words would translate to that, it might say in a sentence is equal to or it might say equivalent to, you might see the same as, or simply the word is. All of those are cluing you in to the equal sign. So now I have three sentences and we're gonna translate each one into an equation. In our first example, I'm gonna highlight the words 20 minus, which are cluing me in to the number 20 and then a minus sign. Next, I'm going to highlight the quotient of 7 and x, which is going to tell me I'm going to have 7 divided by x, and I'm going to write it as a fraction. And then I see the keyword is the same as, so that is going to be my equal sign. And then when I see twice x, that means 2 times x, so I'm just going to write 2x. And that's my first equation. So 20 minus 7 over x is equal to 2x. All right, let's go ahead and highlight certain parts of our next one. 2 plus, all right, so I'm going to have a 2 and a plus sign. And then I see the quotient of a number and 8. Okay, since it doesn't tell me what the number is, I can pick any variable. So I'll pick n divided by 8, and then I just see the very short word is, which is an equal sign, and then I see the number 16. So 2 plus n over 8 is equal to 16. All right, so that one's pretty straightforward as well. Let's look at our third one. Twice. Okay, so twice the what? So that's just cluing me into the number 2, and I'm going to multiply 2 times something. The something I'm multiplying it by is the sum of 7 and r. So I need to keep that together, so I'm going to put them in parentheses, 7 plus r. And then I see is equal to, so I can put an equal sign, and then the number 28, and that will go on the end. So 2 times the sum of 7 plus r um, is equal to 28. And there we go. So now what I have is a scenario. It says, while training for a marathon, your friend increases the total distance she runs by one and a half miles each week. She ran 17 miles the first week. And if she sticks to the schedule, she will run 39.5 miles the week before the marathon. Write an equation to represent this situation. So I can see that the first week she ran 17 miles. So I'm going to start with the number 17. And since it says it is going to be increased by, I'm going to have a plus sign. And since it's one and a half additional miles each week, that would be 1.5 times W, if that is my number of weeks. And all of this needs to equal 39.5, because that's how many miles she is running before um, she starts her marathon. And so again, that W, I just created that myself, that that is representing the number of weeks that she is going to be running, okay? And that's it. So let's go ahead and move on. Now we're going to write an equation with multiple variables. Okay, so first let's just pick out certain aspects that need to have a variable associated with them. Like perimeter might be the variable P, length might be the variable L, and then width might be the variable W. These are kind of common words that we already know variables associated with them. And if I'm reading it, it says the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the sum of the length and the width. So let's translate this now. P equals twice the sum of, so 2 times, 
And what are the two things that I'm adding? It is the length, L, and the width, W. And there we go. So I wrote my equation. I have three different variables there. Let's look at our next one. The horsepower of a motor, so horsepower is typically an uppercase H, okay? It is the product of the motor speed. So motor speed is normally a capital M and the torque. So torque is normally a capital T. And all of that is going to be divided by 5,252. So again, the horsepower is, that's my equals, the product of, so it's telling me that I'm going to be multiplying two different things, the motor speed and the torque, and all of that is going to be divided by 5,252. So let's write it out. H equals the product of, so what two things am I multiplying? The M and the T. So I'm just going to write them as M and a T next to each other. And I already know that that means that they're being multiplied. And then that product is going to be divided by 5,252. And that's it. So again, I was able to write another equation that had three different variables again. All right, let's move on. Now we're gonna write a sentence for an equation. So I'm given the equation, let's translate it back into a sentence in English. And there's different ways you could do this. I can say two times x minus one is five. I could just write it as simple as that. But obviously there's other ways. You might have come up with a different way. For you could have put the product of um, 2 and x, and maybe you said um, less 1, so that would be taking away 1, and then maybe you would say is equal to 5, okay? And again, you could have come up with even more ways, but let's go ahead and do the next one. I have 15, and maybe this time I'm just going to say is 4 times u squared plus 2. And maybe you could come up with another way to write that out, but this is just one way to write a sentence for this equation. So let's move on now. Now we're going to be seeing some grouping symbols. Um, and so we typically see them as parentheses, but sometimes they are hidden. And so some words to clue you into having to write those parentheses might be the word quantity, or it might say sum of, or it might say um, maybe the difference of, okay? Sometimes it is product of and the quotient of, which means that you're going to be um, separating different things. And sometimes you will actually see the parentheses, sometimes it will be invisible. So for our first one, I can see that I have a three on the outside of the parentheses, and that means that it is three times whatever is inside. And what I see inside is the sum of two things, y and one. So I'm going to say three times the sum of which will help me know that I need to group those together, y and 1. And then I can say is, or is equal to, or is equivalent to, any of those would work, um, the number 12. Okay, so 3 times the sum of y and 1 is equal to 12. All right, let's look at our next one. So this one has a quantity on top divided by 3. So the way that I could write this is the quotient of, and then I would know, oh, I have something on top and something on bottom. So on top, I have two things that are being um, subtracted, and I need to keep those together. So I could say r minus 2, and then to clue me in on that division symbol, that fraction bar, I could just write the word and, and then the number 3. 
So the quotient of r minus 2, and underneath it, I would have the number 3, is equal to, or is equivalent to, or is the same as 4. And that is it. Okay, and you may have come up with a different way, which is totally fine. So to finish this off, now we're going to interpret an equation. A lot of times in math, you are given different equations, and you may not actually understand what they are talking about. So I'm just going to walk you through how to interpret one so that you can do it yourself later on. So here we have the formula for the surface area of a rectangular prism. So to translate this, I could just say the surface area equals, and I would just take it step by step, 2 times the length times the width plus, and then the next part, 2 times the length times the height plus the final part. 2 times the width times the height. And so as you can see, the prism is made up of a series of rectangles, and we are adding all of those up to get the surface area of this prism. So to finish off this lesson, I have three problems for you to do on your own. So I'd like you to try them out, and then we will check all of our answers when you come into class. I will see you then.